Hello creepy friends and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be giving you a short review of all 12 books that I read in January. And while I'm doing that in the voiceover, you'll also be able to see how I finished the setup from my January reading journal. Here you'll see I'm just sticking in the book covers of all the books I read in January. And these were printed out with my HP Sprocket sticker paper printer. I'll do the reviews roughly in order of my least favorite book to my most favorite book. So let's get started in on those reviews. I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. This is a thriller book about a murder that occurred in the late 1990s at a New Hampshire boarding school. The main character was attending this school when the murder happened and is now returning to teach a podcasting class and film class. She's attempting to find out what happened, as the wrong man may be in prison. I was entertained by this book, but it was way too long. The author probably could have cut out at least 100 pages, and it would have been fine that way. I, I also didn't really enjoy how she wrapped it up at the end. So this is a fine thriller book. Uh, no major problems with it. I think if you enjoy thrillers, you'll probably enjoy it. Um, I've seen some other people's reviews that they didn't really like the voice of the main character, so that might be something to keep an eye on. But overall, if you like thrillers, this was a decent thriller. Carsick, John Waters Hitchhikes Across America by John Waters. This book is a weird combination of fiction and nonfiction. John Waters is going on a hitchhiking adventure across America. But this book is separated into three sections. The first is a fiction about what the best case scenario could be. The second is fiction about what the worst case scenario could be. And the third section is what actually happened on his real journey across America. My favorite part was the best case scenarios. And then I was less interested in the other two sections. This is a very specific and niche book. You really have to like John Waters and his movies and camp and be okay with raunchy humor in order to enjoy this book. So it's not something I would really recommend to everybody, but if you're specifically into Camp or John Waters, you'll probably enjoy it. He has a very wacky imagination, and like I said, the first part was really entertaining. Something is Killing the Children, Volume 1, by James Tynan IV. This is a horror graphic novel series. I've just read Volume 1 so far. The story starts with monsters in a small Wisconsin town who are eating the children of the town. No one seems to be able to do anything about it until a mysterious woman arrives on a mission to kill the monsters. I really enjoyed the artwork in this volume. The story didn't really feel like anything new or unique, but to be fair, I'm not that far into the series so far. I think I'll continue with it and give it a little bit more of a chance, um, reading a couple more volumes of it. I really enjoyed um, James Tynan's other work, so I'm excited to try to see if I like this one as well. This is great for anybody who enjoys horror and graphic novels. Next, in the video of me doing the setup of this journal, I'm gonna be writing out some of the reviews that I did in my journal, so if you don't wanna get any spoilers, don't read what I'm writing here. <laughs> okay, back to the voiceover. Tinfoil Butterfly by Rachel Eve Moulton. Now, this is a horror book, and we follow the main character, who's a woman on the run from her past. She struggles with addiction and alcoholism. She gets stranded in an old diner, and she meets a strange young child that's wearing a tinfoil mask. She goes on a scary and haunted adventure after that. There's a lot of violence and addiction portrayed, as well as abuse, so definitely check the trigger warnings for this book before picking it up. There is beautiful writing, as well as some transgender representation that I thought was done pretty well. But it is a difficult book to get through, it's very emotional, and it's pretty dark. So I would recommend it only to those who can really deal with a very dark book. The Imposition of Unnecessary Obstacles by Malka Older. This was an ARC. The publication date for this one is February 13th. This is a sci-fi noir mystery novel with a little touch of dark academia thrown in. It's the second book in the Massa and Pleiades series. We follow these two characters as they work together to solve the mystery of several missing persons. In the far future, Earth's ecosystem has failed and humanity has removed to a system of platforms around Jupiter called Giant in the book. 
Plaidi is an academic at an Oxford-like university where she met Massa during her student days. Massa left academia and became an investigator. In the first book of the series, the pair rekindled a romance that they had years ago, and this relationship grows somewhat in the second book. You really need to have read the first book in order for this one to make sense, as there are many references to what happened previously. You also get much more wor world building and explanation in the first novella. I enjoyed this second outing as these two solved another mystery. However, I found myself somewhat missing the world building of the first book. The writing style is verbose as we are in the first person with Pleiadi, who is an academic. Be ready to check the dictionary as there are many infrequently used and antiquated words in the text, as well as some that were made up by the author, ostensibly due to the evolution of language over many years and into the future. I enjoyed the author's clever use of language. The writing style may not be for everyone, but those who enjoy denser dark academia or sci-fi most likely will have a good time with it. I also appreciated the queer representation and neurodivergent representation, although I'm not sure if the latter was intentional by the author. I found Masa to read as neurodivergent. There are some cute quips and banter between Masa and Plady, however, I found their love story to be a little bit flat and not quite as believable as it could have been. Although there is a sapphic relationship in this series, I wouldn't go into it looking for a lot of romantic content as that's not the focus. Overall, this is a solid sci-fi mystery story with an interesting setting and quirky characters. It's an interesting mix of genres, and readers who enjoy sci-fi, murder mystery, and academic settings would probably be keen on this one. The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey This is a heartfelt story, even though it's set after a fungal infection decimates most of humanity. Those who have been infected turn into dangerous, zombie-like creatures. It's an interesting spin on the usual zombie story. The main character, Melanie, is lovable and relatable, as is her teacher. And the prose is well written, but not difficult to get through. It reads a little bit like YA, but that didn't bother me in this case. The only critique that I have is that it could have been edited down, it got a little slow in the middle, and it lost my attention a little bit because of that. Overall, I recommend this read for those who like horror, sci-fi, or zombie stories. Apocalyptic fiction, fungus, lovable characters, a sinister institution, coming-of-age stories, a hopeful ending, or the book that The Last of Us video game was based on. Ein Hallow by Tim McGregor. This was an arc, and the publication date for this one is the 22nd of February. This is good if you're looking for a cold, windswept gothic setting in Scotland, a new twist on a well-known horror story from a woman's point of view, a lot of body horror, and incorporation of the real-life legends of the island of Einhallow. This is a gothic horror story set in the Orkney Islands of Scotland in 1797. Agnes lives on the island with her four children and her unpleasant and abusive husband, scratching out a meager living from the sea. The island is desolate, with only four families living there. One day a mysterious outsider arrives to rent a croft that has been long abandoned and rumors spread regarding his intentions. Agnes's husband volunteers her to cook and clean for this new renter, much to her chagrin. As she gets to know this new man, strange and terrifying events begin to unfold. I really enjoyed the reading experience of this book. There are great descriptions of the stark setting that really give you the feeling of the cold and windswept island. I also enjoyed the characterization of the main character, Agnes, and the journey that she goes on to lose herself and find herself. I definitely had empathy for her situation and how shitty her husband was. <laughs> there was a good amount of body horror and gruesome yet beautiful descriptions of decay and disintegration. The ending also gives a certain sense of catharsis as well. There is a decent amount of trauma that occurs in the book, so make sure to check the content warnings before reading. The main criticism I have is that the pacing seemed a little bit off for me at the end. There are several chapters after the main climax, which I did appreciate having the information they provided but it somehow seemed to throw off the flow a little bit. It's a little bit of a slow build at the beginning, but the action really kicks off in the second half of the book. Overall, I would say that this is a solid gothic horror story with great body horror, and I would recommend picking it up if those are things that you enjoy. Next, we have The Brides of High Hill by Nevo. This was an arc I received, so the publishing date for this is May 7th. It's the fifth book in the Singing Hills cycle, and it's a good book for people who are looking for fantasy, folklore, 
something that's written by an AAPI and queer author. There's a gender non-binary uh, main character. Has a gorgeous setting and atmosphere and a little touch of horror and gore. As always, this new novella from Nevo was enchanting. I've read all the previous books in this series and have enjoyed them all. If you haven't read any of the Singing Hills cycle yet, the author intends for them to be read in any order. We follow the main character of the series, Cleric Xi, who is gender non-binary. They travel across Asia, collecting stories for their order. Each novella in the series has Cleric Xi on a different adventure, oftentimes encountering animal spirits. In this one, Xi encounters a bewitching young girl and her parents on the road, and accompanies them to a nearby city to marry off their daughter to Lord Guo. After arriving at the new city, more and more unsettling events occur, revealing that Xi's surrounded by monsters on all sides. This series is generally cozy-ish fantasy, but this is the first book in the series that includes more horror elements and violence. Since I'm a horror fan, I appreciated the series dipping its toes into another genre. However, the charm of Cleric Xi still comes through along the way. The novella explores some themes of misogyny, generational trauma, and revenge. Vo writes beautiful prose with a deft hand and always includes interesting characters. The author also has a wonderful way of describing the setting, making you feel like you're there. It was a delightful read, and I would recommend it to anyone who enjoys folk tales, fantasy, magical realism, or horror. Out There by Kate Folk. This is a dystopian and speculative short story collection. Uh, read this if you're looking for a dark and wry sense of humor, exploration of misogyny and personhood, androids that catfish you, a void that swallows up all of existence, and the sad life of the last woman on earth. I love this collection. It's the first by Kate Folk, and I can't wait to see what else she does next. Every story held my interest and made me think about something ordinary in a different way. She has a witty and eerie way of writing that I just ate up. My favorite was The Last Woman on Earth, which describes the daily life of the last woman on Earth in the world of men, which is both funny and horrifying. I would highly recommend this for lovers of speculative fiction and horror. The Southern Reach series by Jeff Vandermeer. This includes Annihilation, Authority, and Acceptance. And this is one of my favorite book series of all time, so I thought I'd start out the new year with a win by rereading it. We all thought this was a trilogy, but Jeff Vandermeer is now working on a fourth book, so that's great news. Um, you may have seen the movie, but it's considerably different from the book. It's a masterpiece of surreal, unsettling imagery. Part of Florida has been sectioned off and dubbed Area X. What goes on there is a secret, but the government sends doomed expeditions one after another. Something sinister is lurking in Area X, something beautiful as well. In the first book of the series, you follow an expedition that goes into Area X and you get to see a little bit more of what goes on there. In the second book, you learn more about the mysterious Southern Reach Agency and the government and how they've been dealing with this in an incursion into our land. In the third book, you learn a little bit more about the history of Area X and how it came to be in the first place. Read this if you're looking for cosmic horror and body horror, fungus and spores, an expedition into unknown territory, the uncanny, mutation and recombination of biological forms, surreal writing style, and vivid imagery. And that's everything I read in January 2024. As you saw, as I was reading those reviews to you, I was finishing up the January spread in my reading journal. You saw that I finished up the calendar where I mark off all the days that I'm reading certain books. I stuck in all the printed out book covers of all the books that I read in January. I finished up writing a couple of the little blurbs that I hadn't done yet about the books. And now I am finishing up the stats spread that's in the first spread of the month. I log all of my reading in the Storygraph app, so that's where I've gotten all these statistics from. That app is great for putting all your data together and showing you a bunch of graphs so you don't have to calculate things yourself. In January, the top genres that I read were horror, sci-fi, thriller, and mystery. 
10 of the books that I read were written by authors from the US. One was from a UK author and one was from a Canadian author. The top moods of all the books that I read in January were dark, mysterious, tense, adventurous, and reflective. I read 12 books, and that was 3,283 pages. And I read 28 out of 31 days in January. And that's it for my January reading wrap up. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider liking and subscribing and joining us here for more content. Let me know if you like this type of review video. It's new content for me, but if you guys like it, I'll keep doing it at the end of each month. For more book review content, join me over on my Instagram at biblio underscore creep. Wishing you all a great February. See you in the next one. Bye.